Welcome to Ion Parenting. Today's topic, potty training 101. It can be stressful, frustrating, like it is for me right now, but when your child finally goes, it is extremely rewarding. Here with some tried and true tips is Kara Corden, health editor for Parents Magazine. Kara, good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here. Now, I want you to know, I have a child right now who is like an untrained puppy. <laughs> And I need your help. <laughs> I'm here. So, Matt, now one thing, though, when it comes to potty training, there's a ton of discussion about when is the best time to start. Can you clear that up for us? Yeah. In fact, earlier this year, a study came out that really pinpointed the ideal window, and it's 27 to 32 months. Okay. Before 27 months, they really aren't developmentally ready. After 32, you know they're a little more likely to resist. Right. A little stubborn. So, right, kind of two and a half. Yeah to early three. Right. Okay, that makes sense. Not now, quite is, three. So if you start too early, can you start too early or too late? What happens? Yeah, if you start too early, it, it, you, you probably won't have a lot of success and then it, you've kind of set up a frustrating situation. Mm -hmm. And then too late, they just argue with you all the time, yes. like my sweet child. <sighs> so you've come up with some tips about mm -hmm. how to make the entire potty training experience a little bit easier for everyone. Let's go through them quickly. Uh, the first one is wait until your child is ready, yeah. which leads to the obvious question, how do you know? Okay, so there are some signs. If your child can easily undress himself, then that's a good sign. If they go two hours without wetting their diaper, that's another good sign. If they wake up from their nap dry, that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. If they um, wake up in the morning without a dirty diaper, these are all things that are telling you it's a good time to try. Now how about this one? You say don't reward your child with food. Yes. Why not? I'm not saying it doesn't work, Okay. <laughs> but um, experts really tell us that it's just sending the wrong message, you know, to give something like say M&Ms for going on the potty. It's, um, you know, that's a, going to the bathroom is a natural function and it's not like you would give them candy for breathing or walking, but a reward system is good so you can involve them in it, like you know, stickers on a chart for staying dry or um, pennies in the bank in the morning, just something that involves them. And it's a reward, but it's not food or sweets. Okay, that makes sense. You also say that you should choose your words carefully and avoid yelling. And why yes. is this so important? Um, well, choosing your words carefully, so, so you wouldn't want to really say, um, would you like to go in the bathroom and try and go? Because they'll say, no. So you just say, Let's I have that. Yes, see? <laughs> so instead you say, come on, we're going to go in and give it a try. And if they say, I don't have to go, and you, you say, that's okay if you don't have to go. We ju we're just going to practice. Okay. And of course, yeah, no yelling because it's just going to make the process harder for everybody. And then what about accidents? How do you handle them? Because you want to give the impression that you don't want accidents to happen, but you don't want to be angry. Yeah, so it's just about staying calm. So even if you're walking out the door, you're in a rush, they're in some beautiful outfit you just put them in and the accident happens, you just have to stay calm. It's okay, let's go, we're gonna get you cleaned up. It's all right, this happens. Next, you say you should teach boys and girls differently. How differently are we talking about here? We're talking, now you can tell me if you've done this, but with boys, you don't really want to teach them starting standing up. You want to seat them, and in fact, seat them backwards on the seat so that they can aim a little better. Yeah. Um, with girls, you can teach them to sort of keep their legs together to avoid splashing. And um, you know, with girls also, if they have a dress or a skirt or something, you can teach them to kind of tuck it in the back of their neck, the, the hemline, so that you know there isn't any dragging in the toilet. Right. Little makes tips like sense. that makes it easier. And then finally you say always stay positive. But yeah, it's hard, Is this right? even possible? Right. How important is this? <laughs> it's, you know, stay positive in your own mind, but also, you know, stay positive with your child and just, you know, praising any, any little bit of progress that they make. It really, it goes a long way and then keep in your own mind, this will end, this will work, we will get through this. And we have some props here mm -hmm. just to run through quickly. You say uh, it's important to have a potty chair, a padded insert that kind of keeps them from Falling in. Feeling like they're going to fall in. Yes. Uh, a step stool. What's this? A called? step stool is good for, you know, washing their hands afterwards because that's a big part of the whole potty training process. Okay. And also, you know, maybe to prop their feet on while they're trying to go. Right. Um, and then you say easy up, easy down, close. So two piece yes. pajamas here. Yeah, exactly. Like no snaps, no zippers. We're going to hold off on that until they're really comfortable with the process. Right. Um, you know, cute little underwear, underwear with characters that makes the whole thing a little more exciting for them, a little more of a treat, a little more of an incentive. That to wear their big girl or big boy underwear. And the ones I'm loving and I'm gonna go buy right now are flushable wipes. Yes. That's genius. Yes. <laughs> All right, Kara Corden, thank you so much for being here. For Ion Parenting, I'm Molly Wood. And now for this week's product demo. Welcome to the CBSnews.com Ion Parenting demo. One major point of disagreements between parents and kids, homework. Like it or not, homework is a fact of life for school kids these days. And with younger and younger children having more and more work piled on, it's becoming a big factor for parents too. But there's now something that can help. 
Parents and students can store information, create and deliver notes, projects and presentations, and share it all seamlessly using Microsoft Office OneNote 2010. OneNote 2010 will match your child's learning style by using blank or ruled pages. You can type or write with digital ink, create lists and tables, draw diagrams, and even display math equations. Too many notebooks filling up and becoming hard to keep track of? OneNote 2010 lets you keep it all together in one place. You can gather and organize text, pictures, digital handwriting, audio and video recordings, all in one digital notebook on your computer. And there's no need to worry about your student carrying a big, heavy computer everywhere because you can access all your notes from just about anywhere. The Microsoft OneNote web app lets you store all of your notes online and edit your work through a web browser. And if you have a Windows phone, you can use the OneNote mobile app to stay up to date when you're on the go. We like to call it the homework savior. You may call it the sanity saver. For CBS News, I'm Kara Suboy for CNET.com in San Francisco.